Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant is Father Patton Harland. The gathering hymn is Christ Be Our Light. Let us take a moment to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, Expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man they called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this, is, this man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, they would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason his parents said, He is of age. Question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin. Are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had, been thrown, that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? 
He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind also, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated a moment. Today, we get a dose of reality that God works in ways that we don't often expect or understand. First, we hear how David, the great king of Israel, was chosen. When the prophet Samuel was sent by God to anoint one of the sons of Jesse, he looked and thought he knew which was the one. He looked at Eliab and assumed that this oldest son must be whom God was chosen to make king. But no, God answers, Do not judge from appearance. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Jesse presented his seven sons, but God did not choose any of those. God had the youngest in mind, yet David was not even brought to the party. He was left home to tend the sheep. God did not care that he was the youngest. He knew David's heart, and David had the heart of a king. This can happen to us as well. By default, we judge how things appear. But that is not how God works. He can work through the most unexpected circumstances. He's unpredictable. All things work for his good. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Perhaps we can look for what good God is working during this time of crisis. The Gospel shows Jesus unpredictably curing a man born blind. Jesus works in ways that are surprising to the people of the time, especially the religious leaders. First of all, to our modern ears, the cure is just yucky. Jesus uses spit and dirt to make a paste and then rubs it on the the saliva dirt paste on the man's eyes? Okay, that's gross, right? Where are the rubber gloves? What happened to cover your mouth? And what happened to the six feet apart we're supposed to be? Yet if we can get past this yucky, germ-ridden approach, we can see that Jesus is caring for this man very personally and very closely. He gets right in his face, and he touches him, this sinner, this outcast. Jesus does not shy away from the outcast, the sinner, the unlovable. He loves them too, even more than others that are part of the in-crowd. Jesus loves the unlovable. And so we learn that Jesus has a heart for the sick, the suffering, the downcast, the broken, the fearful. He has a special care and concern for the poor and the outcast. There is no one outside of his loving gaze. Secondly, the circumstances of the cure confuse the people. The blind man washes off the mud paste and a miracle he now can see. But the community is totally confused. Wait a minute, isn't this the blind beggar, beggar, or or is it? They ask, how were you cured? He explains. The Pharisees ask, how were you cured? He explained again. They didn't believe. They asked his parents. 
They know that this is their son, and he was born blind, but they did not know how he could see. They summoned the man again and questioned him a second time. How did he open your eyes? They still don't get it. Jesus acts in an un unexpected way, and they are confounded. It is these leaders who cannot see. They are blind to see who Jesus really is. The man who is blind mocks them. This is what is so amazing, he says, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. God worked in an unexpected way, through some mud paste, he, and he cured a forgotten person, a beggar who was written off by society. It is to this beggar that Jesus comes and cures him. The reason why Jesus works this miracle is because the disciples asked him, Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? In reality, the condition of the man being blind in God's plan becomes an opportunity. For Jesus, his blindness is an opportunity to love and heal him and to bring him to belief. Sometimes what looks like a negative can actually be an opportunity. Perhaps in our current crisis, the same rule applies. God works in unexpected ways. Maybe this crisis is also an opportunity for belief. Let us pray that as people sit at home, some bored out of their mind, some exasperated at trying to be parent, teacher, co-worker, spouse each day, that they may begin to long for God, that they may start to look for God, that they may want to get to know Him, that they may want to get to know Him. And maybe when this is all over and we open churches again, please God, that there won't be an empty seat at Mass. God is working. Look at all the people working to protect each other and to keep people safe, even those just self-isolating at home. And thank God for the medical professionals on the front lines, testing, caring, treating people. That is amazing. God is working through them. Look and see families spending more time together, neighbor helping neighbor, people being much more creative in how to inspire and encourage each other, singing from balconies, applauding emergency professionals, all kinds of online connections through Zoom and social media. God is working. People are reaching out. People are reaching uh, and recognizing the desire in them to reach out. Most of us have been given a break from an insanely busy, busy schedule where we are constantly running. Perhaps we planned a really good schedule for our kids that has kind of fallen apart as the week went along. Perhaps we realize what a challenging and awesome responsibility our teachers have that we often take for granted. Perhaps we have found that we can be super creative when put to the test. God is working. We are being tested, and guess what? We are making it through. Maybe not perfectly, maybe not as expected, but we are still going. And we will keep going as long as we love and support each other and pray hard for all around us. Life is still going on, ups and downs. Let us encourage one another in these ups and downs. See, God is working. If we are struggling, well, remember, Jesus has special love for those who are struggling. If we are confused, like the people in the gospel, well, maybe that's okay for now. Keep looking for God at work in unexpected ways, and help God out. Love your neighbor. Support one another. Share some of your toilet paper. Pray for each other. We can get through this. Let's do it together.
profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, maker of heaven and earth, of all things invisible and visible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord promises to be with us until the end of time. During this holy season of Lent, let us turn to him and draw closer to his loving heart. For Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, and all the Church, that they may be faithful to the Gospel in all circumstances, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national, state, and civic leaders, that God will give them the needed strength and wisdom as they work to protect all people through this public health crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in the community and the world affected by the coronavirus, we pray for healing, courage, and the strength to support each other with prayer and kindness during this crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, especially those of our parish community, that they grow in love for the Lord and rest in His grace during these troubling times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayer requests received and placed in the prayer basket on our altar, that the Lord provide for all needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who suffer from illness, especially those terminally ill, that the Lord will comfort them and ease their burden, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now add our own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we desire to live as your faithful children, both now and in the life to come. In your mercy, hear and answer our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our presentation hymn is Amazing Grace.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. And the praise of God in his name, for our good and good of the most holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end claim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine of Genoa, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in sincerity, through Christ our Lord. And so please check our website daily for updated information and spiritual support. Uh, for example, a, a virtual holy hour has been posted. Uh, so you can basically watch that, or I actually had it playing in the background the other day, and just uh, listening to that peaceful music and, um, and trying to be close to the Lord during that time. Uh, so keep, keep looking at our website and look for our emails. Uh, also, I mentioned the prayer basket, so for, for prayer requests, if you please email us, we set up an email, it's 
prayer requests, one word, prayer requests at stcatherine.net. Uh, so if you send those, we'll print them out and put them on our altar here uh, for people to pray. Uh, and I certainly would invite all parishioners to remember these uh, prayer requests in your prayers uh, as we pray for everyone going through this crisis. And I just want to encourage uh, all those uh, listening and watching uh, just to continue to reach for the Lord, continue to, to look for Him working in our lives, and perhaps even to be uh, God's presence to others in the way we care and love and support each other. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who you call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And I ask everybody to kneel and we'll pray a Hail Mary together uh, for the increase of faith in our parish and families. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lift High the Cross. Amen. 